Green is bowling to Johnny Bearstow, and the ball's bouncer right over him. Bouncers all day. He marks his ground. He leaves. He wanders off, doesn't watch anything, fixes the dirt, the little divot, smooths it out. No, you know, nothing's going to go awry. Another one over his head, doesn't even look at anyone, marks his ground. That's important. Walks, fixes the divots, comes back. The Ashes gave us great drama on this ball, the third one, because on this one, Something different happens. He goes to fix and talk, and he's like, wait, what? What? Even the umpire's like, what? They're celebrating. He's just standing in the middle of them celebrating like, uh, what are you guys going on about? Huh? No, I don't think so. Huh? Well, I look like a giant fool. His teammates are like, oh, boy, Johnny looks like a giant fool. He's like, what happened here? Well, the ball went over. Keeper. Carey just takes it, tosses it at the stump, celebrates early because he knows he's got his man because he knew he was just walking around without paying attention to anything. Now, this caused a ton of controversy, like a ton of controversy. And as someone that's kind of new to cricket, I was really excited to get into the weeds on this, on the history. And look at them. They're not upset. They're high-fiving. Everyone's high-fiving. Same as baseball. The bowlers, the pitchers are tall. And they're kind of shorter. Now, Head's going to go up to him, to Stokes, and be like, hey, let me tell you, no. Actually, like, he tried to do that to me last match. And I had to jump back. And then I asked him, I said, would you really take my stumps? And he said, "Uh, on oath, I would. And you could hear Cummins, the captain, say, he threw it straight away, mate. And then Kawaja says, "Uh, you did the exact same thing on day one, the Warner. So they're trying to say, hey, you did this to us. We're doing it to you. They go to review it out. Now, we're going to get into all the controversy and everything England is saying about why this sucks and isn't good. But first, got to move on to what happens next because Bowler for England, Stuart Broad, comes in. He knows he's on the mic, and he's uh, he's giving everyone a little entertainment. That's all you're ever going to be remembered for, that. That's all you'll ever be remembered for. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said yes. Terry's like, yeah, I know. Did you see all the high fives I just got from my teammates? It was like a really smart, brilliant move by me. Uh, of course, that's all I'm going to be remembered for. It's uh, awesome. Literally, worst thing he's ever seen in cricket that and then he went on to kind of troll them but he's more trolling himself i think by just never leaving his crease without making sure the ball isn't dead which i think is is what he's doing here is he's acting out what he wishes his teammate would have done am i good is it dead no okay and then he thinks he's talking shit here but Warner, here's what he says, and just kind of doubles over in laughter. Like, what, mate? What? <clears throat> All right. Oh, that was good. See ya. Then the players are walking through the long room. This is a tradition. You got to walk through all the members and the club members. And that guy, oh, that guy went for a high five on Steve Smith. Did you see that? In the in the hat, he goes, hey, high five, mate. And then Steve Smith's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll give you a high five. He's like, nah, no way, dude. Uh, no way. And then they start talking I guess real shit, and they, they said some stuff out of line. And this is like the nicest guy in cricket, and he stops and he says, would you call me? I wouldn't say that. And three members got suspended. They're not around anymore. The president of the club, uh, he's embarrassed. These three old guys, they're embarrassed. What's going on? Uh, letter of the law, spirit of the game. Sometimes two different things. This is the whole debate. They got the letter of the law and the spirit of the game. So for baseball fans, you have the rules and the unwritten rules. We have the same thing. They take it a little farther than we do, but spirit of the game, letter of the law. What way did you see that Besto dismissal yesterday? Well, I think it was a, a real opportunity for Pat Cummins to, you know, perhaps reverse his decision. You know, I think he missed an opportunity there in many ways. So if you're like, what, did, what do you mean reverse his decision? This doesn't happen in baseball. I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't even know if it's allowed in cricket. If the umpire calls him out, you can be like, nah, I don't think we earned that. Uh, that's not right. Like, he's not out. He's out. You're, he's not out, ump. We, we got it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Thank you, but we're good. One example of this happening actually involves now coach of England, Bass, who throws the ball there at the wickets and gets the runner. The runner got hit in the head with the ball and then kind of just like walked away to gather himself and the over was over and boom. Oh, oh, uh, that didn't feel good. And then, oh, how's that feel? You're out. I'm the coach of England, and I just did that to you. But the umpires ruled it out, but his captain was like, nah, man, nah, that's that's not cool. I don't like that. Umpires, you're doing your job. We applaud you for getting right, but you're out. So this guy is saying that 
Australia should have done that. Now, staying on the current coach, because he's actually got two more examples of doing this, the very thing that he's upset that Australia did. This is the most famous one. Dude hits for a big milestone. His partner touches the crease safely, turns around to celebrate with him. Oh, nope, you're out. Don't do that. You can even see the umpire motioning. Watch this. So he touches the crease. Then he goes to celebrate with his teammates. Watch the umpire like, dude, dude, get over, get over, get over. Ah, damn. I just got to call the rule the rule. You're out. And uh, he does. The manager of England did say he, he, he has gone on to regret this. And that's why he's trying to say that Australia will regret this as they get older as well, because it's not in the spirit of the game. He also has another one where it's the same situation. The guy touches his crease, and then he turns around to run and celebrate with his teammate, thinking the play has ended, and Baz is like, nah, play's not over. You're out. And that's his teammates reacting to him getting out. Oh, they're not all up in arms and upset. They're laughing at the silliness of getting run out in that way and the lack of attention. But, yeah, he took his stumps and he was just going to celebrate. So a little bit of history there. All right, let's go to another reason why England thinks this was not cool. But I just think looking at this dismissal, um, Johnny's not really gaining an added advantage. You know, there was an allusion to, to Johnny doing it the, you know, in the innings previous to Warner and to Marnus Labuschagne, but those two batsmen were standing out of their crease, and there's a difference. I think people need to understand that. They're, they're gaining an added advantage. Oh, so you got to be gaining an advantage to be getting out, which is foreign to us baseball fans because the hidden ball trick is awesome and a guy will get out for just lifting his foot slightly off the base, not gaining an advantage at all. And this is what they're referencing, that Barso did try to do it to Marnus and right there, but I don't know what this guy's talking about because Marnus wasn't out of his crease. He was on his front foot, but he wasn't really stepped forward. He's he doesn't have to run back or scamper back. The other thing, big difference is he follows the ball, watch his head, turn, follow the ball, follow the ball, not out. So, yeah, Barso did try to do it to Marnus there, but that guy's wrong about being out of the crease thing. We do have a good example of a wicket that was taken off of a batsman who was not trying to gain an advantage at all, and it's pretty interesting to listen to the English commentators talk about this one. Oh, hello, Ooh. hello. Well, his foot's in the air, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's gone. I think he's gone. It's incredibly slack. It really is. It's very, very smart from Johnny Best. You can see Johnny Best is keeping an, an eye. Well, there he goes. Brilliant work by Johnny Bairstow. A wicket out of absolutely nothing there. And Samit Patel will trudge off with the weight of the world upon his shoulders, as though it's all a terrible conspiracy. But in fact, it's an absolutely lousy bit of cricket by him. Just lifting his, lifting his foot. And Besto does the rest. Yeah, very, very slack on the part of Samit Patel. Uh, it'll take him a while to get off the ground, but he has no one else to blame but himself. A lot of credit to Johnny Bairstow for realizing the moment. A lot of credit to Johnny Bairstow for realizing the moment. Uh, even though the runner wasn't trying to take an advantage, he was just simply shifting his weight. Great job by Johnny. Now, if that does nothing for you and you're saying they're way different circumstances, like Piers Morgan said to me on Twitter and told me I'm not allowed to talk about this at all because I'm American, which I'm sorry I'm talking about it. This is the final reason why the English are saying it's unfair. You know, he's it's the end of the over. He's walking down the wicket. It's the end of the over. That didn't matter when uh, it was Colin Wood and it was the end of the over here and Baz did it. But, you know, so it's been done. The coach of England has done it. Now they did. Uh, take that one back, like I said. He's in his crease. Um, he makes his, uh, his, he marks his guard, and it's almost like an acceptance that perhaps the over's done. So because of that foot move, that's him saying, uh, I'm not trying to go anywhere. I'm marking my crease. The over's over. The only real weird part is I, he doesn't get to decide if the over's over. The umpires do. And then the other thing is, this would be a great case if Kerry, the keeper, saw him do this and then still threw it at the stumps, saw him do this, declare I'm not going anywhere, and then threw it at the stumps. But that's not what happened. Here's all five angles synced up, which is pretty confusing and fun to watch. But Kerry grabs the ball and then quickly turns and throws it all in one motion. And he is scratching his crease, right? Let's see. It's all the same. So the ball is out, and he is just starting his little scratch. So Kerry threw it before then. So even if the umpires were paying attention, they wouldn't have called over because the ball had never stopped its motion. Kerry didn't do the normal rhythm of throwing it to slip and then they throw it around. He went straight at the stumps. The umpires would have said, nah, all Bairstow had to do was 
not be a big dummy. I don't know. And I think some Australian fans are saying like, eh, yeah, it's not great. You know, like it's not competitive, but fuck off. Pay attention. This video is brought to you by the Ball in Play League. It is our game that we play in our warehouse. We have six professional cricketers and Darren Sammy on comps. It's on the Warehouse Games YouTube channel. We're in the middle of the tournament right now. Ball in Play League. Tons of fun. Lots of action. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe. See ya. Enjoy the ashes.